Hello, chat. Hello. Hope we're all doing well. We'll get started here momentarily. I played the upbeat music because I feel like a lot of people, especially on Northern R, are feeling that way ever since our uh, newly made way to get herbs. Herb prices have been out of whack for a while. And uh, as you can see from the charts that are uh, auto-playing, I, I mean, looks like they're going in a direction that'll help people. Let's see. Hello, Shadow Wing. Uh, Cargal. Sandro. Shadow Wing. Ty Durden. Lizzie Babs, as always. Adrian. Ricky. Maxim. We'll be fishing in... Uh, uh, Feralis, Feralis, however you want to pronounce it. The celebration music will stop soon. We'll get, we'll get into the game. Sorry about that. <laughs> I already have people whispering me, asking me where I am. Type in chat. Hello. It's pretty sure the mic was live too, though. Oh. For everyone's reference. It's going to be 41 39. 41 39. I'll type it down here. 41. 39 for those that have the map add-ons uh, For those that just want to see the visual it's right here in uh, Feralus a lion should have no problem getting over here Featherman strongholds right around the corner Hordies just come from camp Mojachi Just ride right down I figured since so many people are excited about the lasher farm we do a little fishing in Feralis, but uh I don't think we'll be going to Dire Mall today. Uh, we'll certainly, uh, I have a secondary fishing location I want to check out as well. Um, also just in general, I want to make people aware of this pretty pretty nifty spot. Um, this guy, ZZ Ix. I don't know if he's a fishing bot, but he's been here for more than an hour fishing in the exact same spot, so. Uh, I don't, uh, wait. Anyone want to see if I can uh, mess with him? Uh, just so people know, too, um, the fishing here, I think, is like 300 plus, but when we go to here, uh, we're going to be fishing here a little later, and that's a 400 plus fishing area. Um, nice things you can get here include, uh, of course, there's oily blackmouth and firefin snapper pools. I think there's some... Other, I think you have a chance to get stone skill here. We can check it out. Uh, hopefully the music balance is okay. I have, um, at some point I downloaded the entirety of, uh, I have to remember the name of it. Let's see here. Um, is it streaming? But it's, uh, it's like Sega Dreamcast, like, big fishing or something like that. I have... I have the whole, like, 40-minute soundtrack. I thought it'd make sense for some music to fish with. Well, oh, he's not a bot. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah, look at that. Well, Lil' Karen, if you jump in front of his bobber and he does something different, that might mean he's a bot. But, no, 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 no. He definitely very natural movement. Good job. Okay, I'll turn on the music. Thank you. I was just about to ask. Hopefully you can still hear music and you can still hear my voice well. Thank you, Thalaria. Um, but yeah, this is nice. You can fish. There's uh, floating wreckage spots. There's also sea elementals and sea sprays that spawn. They have a chance of dropping stuff. 
that you might want, including elemental water. And, uh, I'll also, um, I'd like to, let's see, where is it? I think it's right here, right. So I'll do a quick market presentation. Some, some slides I have that I prepared. Um, we can see here Black Lotus uh, did go down quite a bit since the 19th. So the 19th, right, that's our, that's our important spot. That's, uh, sorry, right here. This is where the changes were announced, and then here's where they started getting applied. Now, Black Lotus isn't something you're going to get off of Lashers, but with more people doing Lashers, there's more chances for them to get a lucky proc if they're Herbalist on the Dreamfoil. And also, I think by and large, it's also encouraged more people to just go um, Herbing or other things out in the world. I haven't heard any confirmation if the dynamic Herb spawns are working yet. Um, definitely let me know, but uh, that looks promising, at least for Black Lotus. Um, we see blind wheat has started to come down. Um, it wasn't the most inflated of the herbs, and it's uh, the need for it is a little bit more limited for raiders, but it still has come down, as I know it also drops off of lashers. I don't think they changed the amount on it uh, or the percentage. Uh, Dream foil was already low and actually got even lower um, Which I because before people were still doing lasher farms and now they're doing them more so um, I guess that's encouraging um, Ricky I do um, Cover some of the lower level materials. I don't think I cover every single bit of Herbing, but I know like for mining, skinning, and tailoring, I do cover those drops. Hello, Sonic. The fish are biting quite well, actually. Thank you. Everyone shout out to Sonic. Because these fabulous graphs I have prepared for you uh, are thanks to the work of Sonic, who made a script to scrape all the data from WoW auctions and then automate the making of these uh, graphs. Uh, we'll see Fade Leaf also came down. Um, it was a little inflated. I don't have uh, all the super historical data. And when I say that historical data that goes back like nine months, I have that for some herbs like Black Lotus and Grom's Blood. But uh, this is just a two week thing here, you'll see. But yep, Fade Leaf's come down too. Uh, needed for Shadow Protection Potions. Grave Moss has come down, and this is interesting because Grave Moss isn't something that's going to drop off the Lashers that they added. But um, again, uh, you know, if you are someone who's doing raiding and you have X number of hours to do gathering, um, if you have an Herbalist tune, um, you might have more time to grab Grave Moss because the Lashers are making other things a lot more easy. Um, a lot of the ones I've covered here are ones that aren't super impacted by the Lashers so far. Here's one that's been impacted by the Lashers. Um, they upped the drop rate on Grom's Blood from the Lashers, and there's also Grom's Blood in Dire Mall East node. Uh, there's like one node you can pretty readily get. There's other ones if you do a little exploring. But uh, going from roughly about 1.4 to 1.5, it's below a gold. Um, it hasn't been below a gold since like I, uh, well, there was a period in early summer it got low again, but uh, this is very promising. Grom's Blood's very needed for melee consumables. Um, this is just the herbalism index. And you can see, again, right around the, this is, this is the cliff right here, and then it just, woo. Um, this is great. We'll, we'll continue to follow it as it continues. We're going to have probably some more upward price trend just because it's the weekend. But, um, okay. And that's, that's what I, that's what I had. If, if anyone has any, uh, things that they want to get any, uh, graphs on, any data on, just let me know in chat. 
uh, if you want if you want me to do a graph on something that I haven't done, uh, you can you can tip and I'll drop everything. <laughs> tip or do a super chat and I'll drop and do everything to make a graph for you. I just ran the data scraper, so it should be it should be pretty pretty recent data. Um, but yeah, this this is great. Hello, Athiliana. I am having a wonderful Saturday. Um, I'm actually, sadly, I'm not going to be doing NAX today, which there's some irony in the fact that now that all the consumables are cheap, I, I can't do NAX with my normal group this week or next week. Uh, this week I have a uh, St. Patrick's Day party to attend, which by the way, uh, happy St. Patrick's Day to any that are celebrating. Um, it's a pretty big holiday in the States. Um, of course, historically, there are a lot of Irish immigrants in the States, but I'm sure there's places in Europe as well that celebrate. Certainly Ireland, I would imagine. Um, you know, I, sh I should have... Oh, I wonder if I still have some of my gear left. Hold on. I used to have an RP set that was mostly green. Do I still have it? I think, oh, I, think I got rid of it. That's a shame. We're going to go through my outfit real quick in celebration for St. Patrick's Day to put on as much green as I have. Um, we're going to start by just doing my uh, nature resistance set. Um, let's see. Oh, I have a hoo hoo set? That should be pretty close, right? All right. We got a lot of green. Boom. Right away. I'll take the tabard off. Um, I have a green shirt. Um, for chest... Let's see, do I have anything that's green? Not really. Um, I know I have a ton of gear. This is what it looks like if you've been on the server. Sylvan vest? Oh, that'll work. We will put that there. Okay. Uh, gloves? I think I have, like, some healing gloves. I got them for Tima because they were green. I do not have them. They're not showing up. Let's see here. Those? No. Those tracker gloves of the eagle might work. Hold on. Ah, there they are. Gauntlets of New Life. <laughs> you know, a rogue special. The ones that give uh, 26 uh, healing. I don't even know if I would I even have a green belt. Oh, there's a green belt, Bramblewood. It's mostly my nature resist set. Of course, shoulders, we gotta get that too. Ooh, the well the Fido skin, they're good for NR, but they're not uh they're not really green, are they? No, not those. We might just go no shoulders here. Yeah, I think I think that's going to be the move. No shoulders. I don't have anything that's remotely green. Take that bad boy off. Okay. I hope I am appropriately green. Oh, I actually have my thunder fury out. That's that's embarrassing. <laughs> that that's so. It's like I'm trying to show off. I'm not. I don't. I do not think I have any green weapons. Why would I? Is anything going to be green here? Bash Gooder's not green. Well, I have a fishing rod, right? That's brownish. Um, bark skin. There it is. Oh, not that. Oh, ugh. Alright. Okay. We're, we're, in the, we're in the spirit of the season. Very green, very green today. So if you have some green gear and you're celebrating St. Patrick's Day, that's the, that's how pretty much most people in the States celebrate it uh, at a base level. Like kids that go to school wear green. And that's, that's it. Um, adults often have parties with drinking, but most parties have drinking much uh, much Guinness 
is consumed on this day if you can actually drink it. And uh, for anyone who is still curious where we're fishing, uh, I'll put it in chat again. It is uh, 4239. I'll put it in chat just in case you're looking. 4239. We're in Feralis. 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 Fer nah. I don't know. I'm not in charge of uh, <laughs> night elf naming conventions. Oh, thank you. Frisch says there's uh, green shoulders. There's twink ones from Whaling Caverns. You know, I can just show you guys. a. a if you are at all obsessive about looking a certain way or getting like the right T-Mog, not that I want to walk everyone through this, but really easy thing. You, now, I have Aux, which a lot of players have, especially if you do a lot of buying and selling stuff. But you, but I prefer doing this from the from the. Um, this is uh, what's called like the vanilla UI for uh, Ox. So if you have Ox, you just hit Blizzard UI, and then you know you go to armor. You pick the type you want. So I'm gonna look for leather ones, leather shoulders, and I just search, and then I will shift click, and then I look. You know, hey, is there anything green? You know, I probably won't find anything, but. Now those are kind of green. Ooh, ooh, Wrangler's Mantle of the Whale. Uh, Dark Lock, thank you. I'm going to buy these. Remember, if you're ever looking for something too, you might have a friend who's a leather worker, a blacksmith, or a uh, tailor. You can ask them if they have anything that might look good gonna put down a mailbox if anyone needs one all right let's get these bad boys up this this by the way this is how my mailbox gets full this i'm sorry my this is how my bank gets full because i don't transmog everything because i just don't have enough coins so literally my bank is just full of crud af it, it is saint patrick's day although there's plenty of reason to celebrate if you don't celebrate saint patrick's day you can also celebrate the fantastic herb prices we have now. And I suppose to a certain level, orcs are always green. I could have just run around naked <laughs> as an orc. Um, uh, yeah, and Ty, the... Fishing Derby actually happens on Sunday. It's a time that's a lot more friendly to EU people. It's one of the reasons I've never bothered to go do the Fishing Derby. But uh, I think if you win it, you can get the Elementium Fishing Line, which uh, I don't know how much that gives, but if you have the Barkskin Fisher, um, you could get some pretty high level fishing level. Um, Sandro, that's... Um, so your bags would look like this with PFUI. The search bar I think is native to PFUI. Um, it really helps if you're like a veteran player, you have huge bags and you just have like a million things. Um, especially for me, um, cause I, because I have like my, my icon size, the size that it is, sometimes it's hard for me just to generally find something. I do have another add-on um, called Sort Bags. Um, I just do that because I'm obsessive. It helps. Uh, but yeah, PFUI has this nice little search bar integration with your bags. Um, let's see. PFUI. And then I do um, search, um, find bag <laughs> um see this is the third party integration i have this is sort bags um it's weird it doesn't show me where the search bar is though but anyway this is what it looks like when you you can i can move anything here i don't want to because it, I don't, <laughs> it'll drive me nuts but um yeah you can do lots of stuff with this. 
It's as customizable as you want. I would say PFUI has a pretty steep learning curve, but once you get around that learning curve, it's exactly what you want. And uh, Shagu, the sole maintainer and creator of PFUI, is also an active community member. You can actually catch him online sometimes, but uh, if you go into add-ons, you can usually uh, ask him questions. Oh yeah, Ty Durden. Um, I always, everyone knows I'm a big fan of fishing, but if you don't know, um, there is a fishing pole called the Barkskin Fisher, uh, which is the highest fishing skill bonus fishing pole that exists in the game currently. Um, you wouldn't believe this, but you get it from a Barkskin Furbolg in Hygel. It's a rare spawn. Um, Look at Hygel. Um, see Barkskin Village? There's a cave right here. If you go in that cave and go all the way to the to the very end of it, there you have a chance of finding a rare spawn. I think he might also be called the Barkskin Fisher. But you'll notice you'll notice him. He's at the end of the cave where there's water. And uh, he has a hundred percent chance, I believe, to drop the Barkskin Fisher. Fisher. But uh, yeah. For someone who can't get the uh, elementium uh, fishing line like myself very easily, it's uh, it's a lot more convenient. Yes, but uh, I would suggest uh, you know there's there's uh, there's like two directions you can go with your uh, UI if you like customizing it. There's uh, PFUI. I know there's another one that looks that a lot of raiders also use. That's also worn line with like the vanilla look i can't recall the name for it but i know other raiders use it um, if you're a healer one nice thing about pfui part of the default raid frames is that there is heal comms in it so that's nice as well um and yeah ty i've i've also bumped into that myself there's um uh i think murag knows how to fix this best but um if you're in a raid, it has trouble like lighting up at certain distances, but you can change it to default to a different distance so you know who's in range of your heals or dispels or what have you. Y you know, AF, you make it sound really easy, but I'm pretty sure because that happens at a fixed time for the server, um, it is generally meant to happen most fishing anything's usually happen in the morning uh so like if you do like a real fishing derby like they usually start early in the morning uh, as so when it lives in the u.s early morning is generally something i i can't make for an eu based time zone so um i suppose i could stay up super late maybe one time and make it but even if i do there's a chance i won't i won't actually win uh as a rogue it's a little tougher uh, because there's other classes that have big advantages. Uh, shamans and hunters have the farsight ability, and uh, shamans can walk on water. Uh, priests can walk on water. Uh, the speed in which you can find those pools and catch the fish for the fishing derby is pretty much the metric by which you'll either win or lose. Um, I really should do it at some, at some point, but I just... You know, waking up at like 3 a.m. to do it or staying up till 3 a.m. just isn't isn't a look for me. Yep, see, Alessandro knows. The elements speak. They tell you where all the good fishies are. But, uh, yeah, I you know, I don't... Uh, uh, I did I did want you know this uh, I said this was gonna be a high adventure a more high adventure day so uh, we're looking around you can get uh, elemental water off these guys you can get uh, as you can see I've actually caught some I caught a stone scale not as necessary oh, I just caught another one um, of course winter squid still in season uh, these two fish this was me testing out the early area where pretty much the only thing you can catch is raw white scale uh 
I guess the night fin or the, the day version. But we'll go over there in a little bit. We're, we're in uh, uh, Feralas, Alessandra. Right here. You, uh, if you're looking at the dock, just go up, go up north a little bit. You'll find us. I actually, uh, I bumped into Weech. If anyone remembers Weech, the guy who loves being a, uh, well, when it would still work, a beached whale. Uh, Weech was here when I was getting set up. Shoutouts to Weech. Yeah, you know, I, I, I'm sorry for that, Alessandro. Like, I, I know some people have a... It, it's hard to find a good time to stream, honestly. I try doing noon on Saturday for me because uh, it's, it's a good time for American and European players to uh, intermingle. It's not perfect for everyone, but um, it's about as good of a compromise as I've found, and it works on my schedule, so... When you get Might of Menethil, you'll join me. Well, that's great. Might of Menethil is a, is a, is a great weapon for uh, players who like using two-handed maces. <laughs> or players who don't and just want to do a bunch of damage. I, uh... On a lark, on a curiosity, I, uh... Uh, I can't remember the name of it. Uh, I think it's like the Mall of the Redeemed Crusader. It comes out of the Four Horsemen chest. I, I actually bid DKP on it just because I thought it looked really cool. And it's it's a mace my shaman could use. It's, it's really not good for shaman, but I liked it. I think I actually found a bug with it. But, um, hello, Koisin. Glad you could join us. Oh, little Karen, did you scare away Ziz Zizix? I wanted him to fish with us. Now he's scared of us. Probably didn't help that you are a naked, really, really small gnome who started jumping around him. <laughs> I hope you guys are enjoying the, the, the chill music of Sega Dreamcast's big, big mouth fisher game. I, uh, I was looking around for other... Like, like, what is what is good fishing music, you know? And then it dawned on me, there's games about fishing, and maybe I should just look there. Oh, I actually don't... I don't have my... Uh, you, know, you guys probably want to hear the casts and pulls. Let's see. And uh, yes, yes, Athiliana. Sorry, I won't. I won't be in Nax with you the next next two weeks. You know, now that consumes are way easier to get. <laughs> um, yeah, F Frisch is uh, talking about having hopes that they buff everyone up with weapon skill instead of nerfing goblins. Um. I I think it's a hard balance to strike and I do know that the team doesn't want to obviate um, racial weapon skills but they also don't want it to be such that you take such a huge penalty for not picking the quote unquote right race for for melee at least to a lesser extent, hunters as well, but um, it's not as big of a deal for them because they don't deal with glancing below when they shoot. If you want to be a melee hunter, it would matter. But I, under I understand. I, I think they want to strike a balance so that there's a means to uh, more easily make up the difference for 
what we would know as like sub suboptimal races. I uh, my guess, based on what I've heard and what I understand from what the team has said they want to do, I think it's going to be a situation where races that have the weapon bonuses will just have an easier time getting to that, you know, that special 308 or what is equivalent to 308 if they do actually change the math. And the races that would have a very big difficulty getting to that 308, maybe making it a little easier for them or having a way for them to do it without like, well, I guess I need Edge Master's handguards and forever that slot on my warrior or what have you is always going to be that because it just has to be that way. Um, so I, I understand uh, that difficulty, especially on a server that's generally more relaxed like Turtle Wow and more casual. Uh, it feels bad that like, hey, you know, I want to do content, you know, I'm a warrior, I'm a rogue. And then, you know, when you're not a meta race, like having to feel bad because, you know, like, oh, I just, I wanted to make a night elf rogue. It's like, well, you'll, your, your damage is just always going to be under. I have both jokingly and seriously made cases to the T, both in private and in public about rogues having axes. There are actual issues with it. I mean, there's uh, game balance issues. And I think the team wants to avoid a lot of those. Um, the ones I'm talking about specifically, uh, things like uh, there are axes. There's a couple axes in the game that have uh, one-handed axes that have very good on use effects. Uh, one thing rogues always have going for them is that they have the quickest weapon speed because they, they always have access to a uh, mouse over here. Uh, slice and dice um, increases melee attack speed by 30%. Now, if you have an item that can proc on, like if there's a chance of it on hit, um, rogues will be a contender for the most likely to proc that effect because they hit so often. Uh, if you don't believe me, if you've ever been to AQ20 or AQ40 and uh, you're aware of those mobs that have a, the thorns effect, um, I would invite you to watch what happens when there's a thorns effect on a raid mob and watch what happens to the rogues. They almost always die or die first if they are not paying attention because they just hit more often. <laughs> AF be nice. <laughs> Koisi, you don't have to go anywhere. I think AF's just messing with you. Um, I would disagree, AF. There are some axes that would be really good for rogues. The Hatchet of Sundered Bone in Naxxramas would easily, currently, be bis for orc rogues. It's not even close. Um, in fact, um, uh, let me see if I can just bring up the data on that just to demonstrate. Uh, da, da, da. I think I have this under show and tell, and then that would be brave. Yeah, okay. So let's take a look at uh, what would be known as like a really good main hand. Um, we'll have like, uh, we can look at Gressel, right? Gressel, everyone knows Gressel's like the, the really strong sword you have. Um, 73.1 damage. Just keep that in mind. And it has 40 attack power. Okay. Let's look at Hatchet of Sunderbone. Hatchet of Sun Sundered Bone. There it is. 
So this does a little bit less uh, damage per second, right? But it has 36 attack power added to it as well. See, Gressel has 40. Improves your chance of getting a critical strike by 1%. So Gressel is like designed to be like the main hander to the, the one main hander to like end all main handers. And right here is an ax that doesn't drop off of KT. Um, that at the very least competes with it. So like if you're progressing Nax, you could have specifically Orc Rogues um, absolutely pumping with that thing. And uh, that's... And, and competing with Gressel for just being on this drops by Noth, who's arguably one of the easier bosses um, in Nax to get down. Um, so like, that that's like... Uh, an extreme example, right? But we can look at uh, Annihilator. This is a crafted axe, one-handed axe. Um, chance on hit, reduce an enemy's armor by 200 stacks up to three times. If you have really quick weapon speed, rogues uh, would probably be using this. Um, I don't know if it'd be mandatory, but for very sweaty groups, this, this is a... If a rogue could have it, this all rogues would have this in their kit. I'm not saying that's necessarily a bad thing, but I'm just trying to point out some of the spots where there's very strong axes that if rogues were to get them, it, it could change things uh, in an unforeseen way. That being said, I think the lore for rogues is such that they should be able to use like one-handed axes. Um... It's it's a long, both joking and and real debate. I would I would I would say. I have long wanted them. I mean, obviously I'm an orc, so uh, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, where is it? No, not that one. Oh, this one. Uh, rogue orcs get. I've never. It's never mattered for me, so I've never looked for it. See, we have uh, five weapon skill. Axes and two-handed axes. Um, as a rogue, um, another thing that would be a potential issue is that uh, rogues specifically get weapon skill in their talent tree. Um, I'm not sure where you put axes as well, because this is uh, sword specialization. Would it count as a sword? Um, would it be like a dagger? Uh, this is close quarters. This is for daggers and fists. And there's also a mace specialization. Um, would it be good for... Would you put the axes in with maces? Like, it's a little hard to know. Um, but there is a... Uh, right here, weapon expertise. This increases your skill with sword, fist, and dagger weapons by three. Uh, you put a couple points in that bad boy. And you're, you're pretty well set as a rogue. But you would probably need this for axes as well which makes this even more mandatory. I'm not running it because right now I'm running my, my derpy uh, solo tank build, but. And IEA is great if, uh, if a rogue's willing to do it. Improved exposed armor. Um, but I know it's not that there's anything particularly wrong with the expansions. Oh, it's a lock. If anyone gets a ironbound lock chest, let me know. I'll, I'll pop it open for you. I didn't know they drop here. <laughs> oh, wow. A thick leather belt and some heavy leather. Can't live without that. A bloated. Oh, these are, these are the ones you open. Ooh. I went out a ring. Oh, the band of the unicorn. That one's actually worth selling. Now, you didn't fish that up, Thalaria. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Frisch, I, I would actually agree with that. Pole arms and axes have a similar vibe to them. But then, would... 
should rogues get to use pole arms too? Hello. Wait, Volca, you're not. Are you the Volca? Like the music composer Volca? You're jumping up and down a bunch. Okay. Everyone say hi to Volca. If you've heard uh, music <laughs> on the server, um, good chance Volca had a part in it. You're my voice? Oh, I thought you said <laughs> voice at first. I am your Volca. Um, a lot of the audio mixing, uh, audio balancing, and just com compositions themselves, all thanks to Volca. Believe it or not, a lot of the turtle team also plays on the server. And they at least have the grace not to be like mega super bissed out. <laughs> Thalaria, you need to, oh. Oh right, you're a high elf, that makes sense. See? And yeah, Volca does a lot of work for the radio team as well. For anyone just uh, tuning in, happy St. Patrick's Day. If you have, if you're celebrating, you want to just put on some green gear. I thought it was this week. Oh, the party's this week. I had a contractor tell me, happy St. Patrick's Day. So me and this contractor at work, both are under the auspices that St. Patrick's Day was, is this weekend. Yeah, it was Sunday. I apologize. <laughs> right, listen, St. Patrick's Day is out of game. I hope not. That contractor's a little rough around the edges. Morag was just busy correcting me about one St. Patrick's Day actually was. I do have an ugly hat, but it's green. <laughs> Vrograg celebrating St. Patrick's Day today. What a, oh, that's the ship that was bobbing me around. You came for the fame? Nice. Oh yeah, if you're if you're uh if you want to thank Volka in game, he's here. The composer. Yeah, well, you know, the reason I have the the Bramblewood headpiece is because it has 30 nature resist. If you need that for some some uh AQ fights. But yeah, that's probably a little less. I mean, it is green, right? I mean, it is green. It's just like a mint green. AQ40 for Alice. Yeah, nope. I'm fine with that. Although, um, let's see. The bugs spread up here. They made it all the way to 1,000 needles. I I don't think they made it to for Alice, though, when they spread in lore. Well, they made it up to the Barrens. But did they make it this way? I don't know. Oh, I have something uh, cute to show you guys. Uh, the cat cam, I can activate it, but it doesn't have the cat in it. It's got Bulbasaur. Bulbasaur is in Mandalore's bed right now. I'm trying to see if maybe Mandalore gets jealous that there is a stuffed animal in his bed and he'll come over. Yeah. Yep, new cat. New cat confirmed. Friendship is ended with Mandalore. <laughs> so, 
so um from the from the raiders here in chat uh i think i'll put up a poll i'd be curious to know what you guys feel let me do a poll here Update number two. Let's see. Great. All right. But could do more. All right. But went too far. And... Yuck. All right. I'd like to know what you guys think about the uh, the economy update that was done this week. The lashers dropping hard to find herbs, the dynamic spawning of herbs, um, the fishing, the proposed fishing dynamic pool update. Um, those things. I, I'm again. I'm not sure if the dynamic herb and fishing pools has actually happened yet, but. Um, it's still it's still in the works. Um, I'd like to know what you guys think, though. See you, Volca. And hello, Flamian. Uh, no, AF. I know they're taking over Kalimdor, but I'm just saying I don't think they're in Feralis, are they? The wilderness in Feralis is already infected. Is it really? The wilderness. Is that uh, the high wilderness? So it'll be over here, you think? Are there really um, solithids? I can look. Well, yeah, but that was that was just the event. Oh, okay. Murag's telling me maybe that is the case. Let me check. There's an easy way to find that out. So, Silithid. Just look for Silithid, right? And then go to NPCs. The Barons. Thousand Needles. So, I mean, I see Tenaris. I see the Barons. I see Thousand Needles. I mean, I actually don't see Silithus, which is kind of wild to me, but. <laughs> so, this maybe isn't. Uh, do you have the name of the mob, AF? Um, I'm trying to think of what they would be called. Um, but they only... For Solithids... That's, um, um, I wonder if I could check by zone. For us? Um, no, that's not going to help. Fishing, so Frisch says fishing pools feel very timed. There's still one spot I go to check in Telebim with six or eight stone scale pools lined up. Yeah, that's, that was my experience. I actually did check out the fishing pools. I think they're still like on a pretty long timer. Um, and if anyone was awake, I know a lot of the US people were around when the changes were announced. And I think initially the gray drop nerf was in for the lashers, but the herbs weren't added. So pretty much had to wait a full day before the devs could put that in so i don't know if the dynamic stuff's up but let's take a look at the poll i'll take a look at that riddle in a second um so 44 percent say it's great 44 percent all right but could do more um a little over 10% said all right, but went too far. And uh, no one said yuck. Which is um, pretty much what I've been getting from what I've been talking to people asking about it. Um, I think overall most of the response to it has been positive. I definitely think there's been those who have been urging some caution with it. It's certainly, again, another hard... Um, balance to strike um, herbs are so valuable for raiders in endgame because of the consumables that 
for many, it's necessary to either buy herbs and have stuff made or just buy consumables. But that also means you need to have an herbalist. So I think one of the reasons they added these drops to the lashers is so that people that aren't herbalists have a way to gather these materials that they need a lot of. Um, but on the other side of that, there's people saying like, well, now you just obviated all of herbalism. Like why even be an herbalist? Um, of course, there's still reasons for that. The still herbs you can't get unless you're an herbalist like black lotus and grave moss. But I feel like that's a, that's a fair thing to say. Um, and some people are saying it's it's too easy, um, which, uh, yeah, it, it, if you're a class that does really good at lashers, it, it is really easy. Uh, you can easily get five lockouts in a matter of like a, like less than an hour. Um, but on the other side of that, if you're trying to make herbs more accessible to raiders for even ones that aren't herbalists, then you have to acknowledge that some classes are not good at killing lashers, especially ones that don't have AOE or ones that have a lot of nature damage because they're immune to nature damage. So I, I don't think, I think it's an aggressive move and it is certainly based on the data I was able to show, I think it's it's been a good one. Uh, it certainly is helping. I think more than anything though, um, working against inflation is probably the best move. Um, anyone who is there for the news flash that happened after the news, I did a little live stream to, to break down the big announcement. Um, Aklix was actually saying that it's they Lasher Farms accounted for more than 15% of all gold generated on the server, which which is just mind blowing to me personally. Uh, it, exactly. So, so like Brax, I would say that if they can get this dynamic herb thing to actually work, I think that would quiet that kind of criticism because if herbs were like remotely available or more available to players outside, I think it would be, that would be good. Um, because I, uh, most herbalists and myself included kind of enjoy walking around and grabbing herbs. It's kind of fun. The lashers become very repetitive, very rote, you know, um, it's not, it doesn't feel like you're an herbalist when, <laughs> if you're a lasher farmer. I, so I think that's fair. So the dynamic, uh, respawning of, of herb nodes is working or is like maybe not aggressive and needs to be tuned up more. I think, I think that would be better. All right. So we've been fishing here for, for a minute. Um, I want to go check out this other fishing spot to catch some real rare fish. So finish up your casts. We'll, uh, we'll mount up. I'll get on non-green gear. Because <laughs> it's not really St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> oh, why is that? Put that away, too. Thank you. Murag said I'm allowed to celebrate whenever I want. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll take a leisurely stroll over there. Um, but, uh, let's uh, swing up and kill these, uh, water elementals to show off what they can drop. So maybe, maybe someone will get a, um, get a uh, elemental water. Oh, Alessandro was talking about doing four horsemen, where you burn one of the four horsemen to make it easier. No, oh, uh, my keybind was on fish. Let us know if you pick up any uh, any good drops. You see, these guys are pretty easy. Um, I'll show off their drop table in a second. I think the way to walk up is around here, though. Yeah, it's straight ahead.
Um, but yes, that... Oh, jeez. Okay. My camera good? Alright. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm definitely going to touch on that. Alright, we'll mount up and, and go at normal speed here. Uh, let me see. Um... Remember too, when you're looking for a path, look for the torches. I'm, where are the torches here? That looks like the path there, isn't it? I think that's the path up. Um, yeah, uh, Alessandro's mentioning there was a fix to enhancement shaman. So for those that were not in the know, um, part of enhancement shaman's rotation is an ability called storm strike. Um, it does spell damage and allows an additional melee hit, which is always helpful for enhancement. Uh, for one reason or another, though, because there's a second rank with the way the devs coded it initially. Um, uh, so normally Stormstrike has a cooldown, but because there was two ranks, they didn't make they made those cooldowns independent. So essentially, Enhancement Shaman had two ranks of uh, Stormstrike they could use which really helped their DPS. Um, that was corrected. Um, many people know that I'm uh, in the class council. Um, one of the classes I'm a member of uh, is Shaman. And uh, I know not, 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 uh, I won't say how conversations went there, but um, I myself definitely uh, said that it kind of felt weird because Enhancement Shaman are not top in DPS charts. So it kind of felt like kicking them while they were down. But they'll get there, I'm sure. <laughs> you can definitely how, imagine how they went, Alessandro. Um, I don't even play Enhancement, and I was like... Come on, man. Like, really? Um, one thing that I was, uh, that I personally kind of harp on is that, well, it's more of an observation about how bugs exist in the game. So there are some things that have just been bugs for a long time that definitely are bugs in that they're not, they're not noted anywhere, but they work in a way that is unintuitive. Um, Hello, Durgan. Glad you could jump, jump, uh, drop by. <clears throat> uh, yeah, well... Generally, when you're... I mean, I didn't even bring up Holy Strike, for being honest. I think it's not a mystery to anyone that that's a very strong ability. Um, yeah, I, 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 that was my opinion as well is that yeah okay it's a bug but if you're gonna fix it wait for class changes two to come out just fixing it now kind of felt a little i, I want it's not mean-spirited but it's just like out of all the things you can fix like that that sort of made it to the top okay i would love if rogues could dodge holy strike I uh, I used to duel one of our um, one of our guilds, uh, Ret Paladins, and uh, I tell you, Holy Strike was always the thing that uh, just couldn't do anything about. If I was better at PvP, I probably could have won, but uh, <laughs> I'm not that good at PvP. So, uh, but it, it it attacks on uh, what's that? It attacks on. A spell a spell hit table so there are greater holy resistance potions though <laughs> now let me um we're gonna be heading up to right around here 48 5 that's sort of our we don't want to so if you look at this map we don't want to jump into the water here anywhere south of that because there are very strong green dragon wormkin there that will kill us even if we're all grouped up, we'll still have trouble. Um, what is the... Let me see if I can find it. Um, 
Actually, you know, what am I talking about? I think Rograg actually has the recipe. Yep, here it is. Grady, greater Holy Protection Potions need Golden Sand Sam, so that's cheap, but Elemental Air has actually always had an elevated price. Um, and that has to do with a repeatable turn-in for the Centaurs just north of here in Desolus. So... No, 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 Thalaria, we're not doing the Nightmare Dragon. If it's spawned there, we can go watch some, uh, like, World Boss Coalition or some other group try to kill it. But, um, the World Boss Dragons that spawn in this area, uh, I think that one specifically has, like, a really nasty ability. Uh, like, spawns mushrooms, I think. And uh, just kills everyone or puts them to sleep. It's it's really not a fun fight. I've done it before. <laughs> Mirag says it's random where they spawn. So we're going to go north of the Twin Colossals before we turn east. Thank you, James. I, I appreciate you saying that. I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed the new show. I've been having a lot of fun the last couple weeks making them. I'm really looking forward to this next week because... Um, yeah, I was done production for this last news episode on like Monday. Uh, it was already like scheduled to release and I didn't find out until like a couple hours before airtime that the economic change is going to go through. The fact of the matter is, is that I generally release the news right around the time they have a new change log not because i want to have that news missing but because oftentimes um they will put stuff on change logs that doesn't actually get added or the community really hasn't had a time to react to something um and since i try to do ethical journalism i think it's important that the news is as accurate as it can be. So by giving there to be like a week of breathing time for announced changes and stuff, uh, it gives time to do more impactful reporting. Uh, I think if I knew a little earlier, I might have done production a little different, but uh, you know, the good news is now uh, coming up for this next week's uh, news broadcast, I'll have a lot more data on how the community, um, economy change has altered things and you know for instance they announced that there would be dynamic respawns on herbs but because we've had a week of time and that hasn't happened or at least i haven't seen any proof of it happening um i can talk about how that you know hasn't been implemented yet you know to make sure people are as updated as they can be market watch is going to be wild of course but Uh, yeah, James, uh, you know, part of Fish and Chat is that uh, it's kind of an open forum. If you have questions you want to ask, you can ask them. I mean, just want to remind you, I, I can't actually talk about deliberations in class council. I can give you my opinion, and I can tell you that I, I am a member of class council, and I, I do work on the shaman stuff, but I, uh, I can give you my opinion, but I, I can't tell you how the council will react or anything like that, or what they already have in store. Durgan, I watched that video too. Durgan is uh, in say chat mentioning what is known as the uh, uh, Moronic Minds. It's a YouTube channel. Uh, does like little fun machinima animation stuff. Um, he released a video recently of what the uh, each race cinematic, if it was if it was true. So, you know, it's a lot of it's funny. But the one for Orc had me laughing too. Durgan listed what was said. It's like, long ago, many good Orc, strong, then demon, demon bad, or come to bad, then angry. <laughs> yep, Iron Branch has the rest. Orc strong, this time no demon, except Warlock, then some demon. <laughs> All right, we're going to... We should we should stick to the path for a little longer. <laughs> Still less. And uh, as someone who mains a Torin, of course I appreciated that video. Cause uh, <laughs> what they said about Torin was very funny. Um, 
am I so James asks, are you able to divulge if the class change team has considered Stormstrike being a mana generator instead of cost? Um again, I I can't divulge anything that's said in there. Um so uh I I can't say, but uh that's a good idea. Um there's a there's a lot of enhancement in many ways is sort of the the crux of of many issues for shaman because it it lacks a lot of identity and and gearing's very awkward um i don't think it's crazy to say there's a lot of work that needs to be done specifically for uh shaman and specifically for enhancement elemental is in an okay place they still need some um some support and I would say a firmer definition really of what they are because a lot of times part of a class or specs definition comes down to like like are you support are you dps are you tank and you know for shaman a lot of that is you you are support but understanding how much of your class kit is dedicated to support and how much of like your spec is dedicated to support um, a lot of that needs definition, and it's it's uh, difficult to weigh that all out. Of course, enhancement, just like uh, elemental, has mana issues. Um, it would be interesting if Stormstrike generated mana. I'm not sure how how that would work. Um, the debuff it, it applies actually is very impactful for Elemental Shaman because we do all nature damage and if we can hit that debuff we get extra damage. But, um, <laughs> uh, oh, Durgan, congratulations, you did your first MC raid. Uh, that's, that's great. I hope you had fun. I hope you learned some stuff. Oh, you got the tier two pants. That's awesome. Um, Farmer's Market, yeah, they're great. Uh, way, way back, uh, Blackwing Guard and Farmer's Market were, um, I think it was like around the holidays or something. And when I say holidays, I mean like the holidays of 2022, 2023. <laughs> so it was way back. But uh, we were short on raiders to do Nax, and we actually joined together to take down a Nubricon in a one-time meeting only where Blackwing Guard and Farmer's Market made a new raid group called Black Market. <laughs> here's, here's our fishing spot. It is um, across the um, water is some very dangerous uh, green dragon kin. Be careful. What you should know about the water here, it is 400 plus fishing. So you need a good rod and you need a good lure to have a chance of catching anything here. Um, if you need a couple, I have some aqua dynamic fish attractors. I'll be using them myself because uh, um, Nightcrawler's only at 50 and I think I'm out of the wriggling Nightcrawlers that add 75. So I'll be using this. Uh, oh, bright bobbles. Bright bubbles might work. I should probably test as they last longer. <laughs> the Thalaria putting her life in her own hands. <laughs> that is pretty close to him. So, um, something to note here. Yes, Iron Branch. Happy Green Day to you too. Even though I got the day wrong. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, th well thank you. Um, hold on. I think I have something green for you. Hold on. Let me find something green I have. Uh, here is a winter fire water. Uh, agility potion. A moss agate. And I can't give you juju power. Uh, you can take you can take this thistle tea. And how about a, uh, a deadly poison? <laughs> You can't use half of those. Yeah, I wouldn't eat the deadly poison, Iron Branch. 
Um, oh yeah, what is um, uh, James? What is the uh, uh? Oh oh, when you say Hakar, you mean the Zandalaran hero charm, right? Yeah. Yeah, Durgan, if you want me to open that, I can. Oh, that wasn't me. So, oh, I was just uh, mentioning. So the fish we catch here uh, are very hard to catch. And um, you'll be catching raw white scale most of the time. You might catch night fin or the, or the day version of it here. Give me a sec. Let me, let me finish this caster again. Oh, I missed it. Cool. All right, here you go. I mean, as far as PvP balance is concerned, uh, Shaman's in an okay spot, and a lot of the things that we want added to it are things are like... <laughs> we have to be careful because you don't want to have it have too much of a PvP consequence. Um, as, I mean, I've seen it. Like, I've been on my Elemental, right? And... She's very well geared. And I know that I can pretty much push out like five to six K damage in like a very short amount of time. And that would kill most people. Um, I also know shamans, I think, are generally the best counter for paladins on the server. I can't speak to that much again because I, I don't actually do that many battlegrounds. Uh, Obamswin's done none. She doesn't have a mount. So, you know. Ooh, Traveler's Gloves, nice. Uh, yeah, uh, Elemental is, oh, is, is meant to be bursty. Absolutely. Oh, what did I just catch? That wasn't a, uh... Okay, yeah, right... Raw white scale salmon. I wanted to show this off. Let me finish this cast. I'll show you why. Um, no, knife and snapper. Um, so, we'll take a look here. Um, raw white scale salmon. If you look, they're actually pretty valuable. Uh, yep. Um, so, Murag says, hey, well, they're like lobster. So, if we look at dark claw lobster lobster is a lot cheaper so they um you can use these i'll bring up the um let me get over here so um dark claw uh so this you need dark claw lobster to make lobster stew. And you can see here that it's a 14 stam and 14 spirit food, which is great. That's some of the highest spirit you can get. Um, it's a decent amount of stamina. It's not the highest stamina you can get, but it's good for classes that want spirit, maybe don't want to splurge for a night fin. Um, I know priests would like this, of course. But if we go to um, uh, white scale, so here's raw white scale, but you see it's a reagent for two things. Now it can make the spirit food, but it also is part of Le Fish au Chocolat, which is also a custom uh, f recipe. And it uh, it lets you gain one dodge and four defense. So this is a very good tanking food. Um, this is part of the reason why it's probably as, value as, it is, uh, as valuable as it is currently. So, um, you know... We can help take some of the pressure off the market by catching some. Make sure if you get them, by the way, don't don't just vendor them. Like these are actually valuable. Iron Branch says we were using Dark Claw Phase One on Telebim on progression because it was easy to farm. Yeah, exactly. You if you go out to Ashara, that's a majority of what you'll catch in the in the deep waters 
But what was fun for me was I didn't realize that this this water here in, in Feralis is actually 400 plus water and has like valuable fish. So I, I thought it'd be fun to show it off. Um, Thalaria is asking where you get the cooking recipe for fish au chocolat. You get the fishing recipe from a quest chain that starts in Lower Karazan. Let me bring up the... Uh, um, so, uh, thank you. It, it, it is a drop, but the drop involves a quest that takes, uh, the drop the yeah. So, so here's the drop. Um, it doesn't say where it, this drops out of, um, some, somewhere in lower Karazan, but, uh, yeah, it, as you can see here, it's, uh, that start doesn't it start a quest oh wait no this is the actual hmm oh see here's here's the quest right scribbled cooking notes lost and found rothland family brooch the secret recipe the doorman of karazan charge of karazan and then boom you get the recipe it also requires chocolate which um which is actually did i not spell that right chalk hmm Premium chocolate. Um, you get it from a chocolate vendor who's just in Tenaris. So if you're wondering where chocolate is, there's just a guy in Tenaris who sells it. But uh, yeah, it's, a, it's an important food. Part of the, uh, the ecosystem. No one will ever help you clear cooks in Kara 10. I've been on for really that I find that hard to believe because um, the cooks in the kitchen of Karazan are also the people who guard the Medivh's Merlot and Medivh's Merlot Blue, which are respectively the highest stamina alcohol and highest int alcohol you can get in game. Um, Oh, congratulations to Durgan. Uh, I know getting the new portal books has been difficult up until recently. Um, yep, you link the Merlot Blue. Um, I don't know if it drops. It, it might drop from those mobs, but I just know that usually when I've done raids, we, we'll kill everything in the kitchen just because it clears space to go get the... Um, the Merlots. <laughs> Brewing secondary proficiency went... <laughs> yeah, I mean, that would be nice. Y you know, I, I won't lie, like, that... I would argue that that should be a, um... a profession of some kind. I don't know if it should be a primary one, but it would make a fun secondary, certainly. I know the dwarves would love it. I know they already have designs of what they're going to do for the new profession. A lot of times really good ideas for secondary professions um, can just be kind of cached within survival. So maybe a little like add a way to make like a brewing keg sort of like how they have gardening you just have to wait a while and put some materials in you can get um, some kind of buff uh food or a, a drink rather all right so bright baubles does work on my rod which is nice oh man i would Absolutely. There are some, um, I had a really fun conversation with, uh, Balake sometime this week about some really fun fishing changes the team could put in that wouldn't be overbearing, um, as far as like, like developer wise, it's, it's really hard to get, um, get ideas in now. Part of the reason is because the developers are like working really hard right now on a new material. And uh, 
you ever want proof on that, one of the reasons, one of the ways you can know that's true is when you look at how many things have been on the change log as of recently. Uh, they've been small because the developer has been working on other things, so. I, I don't know about a witch doctor profession, but I think it would be fun to make voodoo dolls and charms and giving trolls a racial benefit, a, a, a boost to it. <laughs> that would be fun. I'm generally in favor of fun ideas. Things that like don't have like massive game impacts but are just you know just fun to do also even though my fishing is at uh 405 i'm not actually getting 100 percent catches here interesting iron branch i love watching trees dance druids have so many good dances it's unfair Oh, they broke that model? Yeah, I know I know the cats have a fun dance too. But yeah, well, I mean I've caught some night fin. Night fin's still valuable. Uh these these white scales I think will will sell. So definitely, you know, if you have, if you have the means to catch fish here, I would suggest it. Iron Branch, that model doesn't have a dance animation, right? It, it, it can't. Does it have a sit animation? Or maybe a sleep? gotta have one of those right nothing it is nothing it is a jump animation and a reverse <laughs> um you know one thing uh talking about animations and visuals one thing that i have also proposed and i'm in favor of and i i don't i don't think this is controversial but this is about shamans um, I would love there to be, whether it's something you get like in game from a quest, whether it's default, um, it would be fun if the three varieties of shamans had different aesthetics on their totems. Um, I think the totems that exist currently, um, match the vibe of Torin well, but, uh, there already are models for troll totems in the game that I feel like trolls should have access to. Uh, I'm not sure what a totem should look like for an orc. I've seen a lot of different artistic renditions, but uh, there's, you know, there's three classes that are, you know, quote, unquote, hybrid, right? And druids have tons of skins, glyphs, all sorts of things. I mean, look at that. Like, Iron Branch hasn't been the same thing for more than a minute here. Like, <laughs> um... But uh, I think it'd be cool if uh, there was a an aesthetic element added to shamans. Uh, Durgan brings up a good point. The Torn are teaching, or rather reteaching, the orc shamanism in this era. So much of what they know is Torn. That's a good point. Um, I think all I would add to that is that, uh, the story progresses in Turtle Wow. So maybe as part of the continuing story of shamans learning, uh, sorry, orcs learning shamanism is that they're starting to get their own identity within it. 
and understanding more of their their old ways. Yeah, and 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 Durgan, I'm sure you wouldn't you you wouldn't disagree that trolls certainly sh they already have their own models for totems, and they have a much longer history with it. Um, so, Valeria asks, why are 40-pound grouper and plate of armor fish white, but they do nothing? Now, the 40-pound grouper is an offhand. So, is it not? Oh, it's, it should be an offhand. Maybe bu bug tracker that? And, uh, plated armor fish I thought had a use. Let me, let me double check here. It's worth, uh, worth taking a look at. Plated armor. Ah, so plated armor fish are part of the craftsman writ. Uh, this will give you a uh, one of the two different Argent Dawn marks that you might need. Um, but let's take a look at the other one, the 40 pound grouper. Oh, there it is, 40 pound. Okay, it. this is just where it's fished. It actually has no use that is something that should be rectified i would i would agree if it can't be an offhand where did shaman serpent ward go i don't know what serpent ward does i don't think i've ever heard of it in vanilla era is that something in in expansion material where it where it exists. Are you <laughs> If you're talking about um they have a poison cleanse totem. That that's kind of a way to ward serpents in that you don't let them poison you. Oh, okay. So, oh, I see. So in, it's so it's a Warcraft totem. Um, so if what it does is it's a temporary totem that launches small volleys of damage for a limited, we have Searing Totem that does that. I think with the design of shamans, they wanted to give each of the elements sort of a thing that it did. And fire being one of the elements, its primary thing is damage. And earth and air already are doing a lot of heavy lifting for the rest of the shaman kit so they probably just gave that that kind of a concept over to to fire i, th I think from like a you know you have to make concessions with game design uh, versus lore i think that's probably why they did that and that would be fun durgan as long as it was just a skin just because there's gameplay implications with a searing totem doing nature damage. I mean, as it is, uh, I, I know I've I've tread this ground very well, but totems aren't tracked by DPS uh, logs or anything. So I've heard people say like fire totems don't do any damage. I've heard other people say like they do tons of damage. They need to be tuned down, and it's like no one actually has like the hard numbers on it. Like, you can go through logs and try to figure it out, but the problem is, is the second you have a second shaman, you don't know who the totem belongs to. Uh, Alessandro says, Poison cleansing totem is straight below Wind Fury totem in terms of power. The amount of mana and global cooldowns it saves is amazing. What if I told you, Alessandro, that shamans don't really have to deal with global cooldown and totems anymore? So actually, all totems got stronger. You know, Durgan, you you could optionally just mod the game yourself if you've trusted yourself, if you knew what you were doing. Um, that The thing you're talking about, Durgan says he wishes that Blizzard could look like Reign of Fire. 
because he's a dwarf and he's a dark iron dwarf so yeah like lore wise that would make way more sense but um if you knew how to mod the game and like this level of modding would actually be pretty simple you would just have to find in the game with like a you have to you know extract the game find where the particle effects are for blizzard and then find where it is for rain of fire and just switch them or copy the rain of fire one over to blizzard and it would only appear like that for you but if that is something you wanted you could definitely do it yourself i i know everyone would see the same lame ice spell I, I know a lot of people speak highly of the Poison Cleanse Totem, and as an elemental shaman, I secretly hate it. Because I know how strong it is, but it's like, I really would like MP5 right now, because I'm low on mana. Because I'm always low on mana. I'm like, oh, we need a Poison Cleanse Totem. I'm like, you son of a guns. <laughs> Give it back. I didn't think about this till now, but I, I am concerned that my music might be double playing for you guys. You guys probably didn't even notice it, but uh, hmm, because I, I know I'm hearing it. You guys haven't noticed double music, have you? No, okay, as long as it sounds okay. I gotta try to get the best value out of my, uh, what are these called? Aquadynamic fish attractors as I can. Well, I mean, you're not, you're not wrong, Zulsi. Um, I think most of the AOEs that are just channeled spells that you just stand there and cast, they're, yeah, they're not, they're not the best. But that's because uh, I think part of the game design is that you're not putting your caster in much risk to do them. Um, because you can, you're just channeling it and leaving it there. The biggest cost is just mana, right? Um, same thing goes for Blizzard. But if you do something like Hellfire, like you're at risk, right? If you do an Arcane Explosion, you're at risk because you're in melee doing big threat. Um, even something like Flame Strike has a big mana cost, but. Um, the risk with it there is that because it's just one big burst of damage, if the mobs move, you might not hit all of them. Um, it would be cool if there was something they could add to Reign of Fire, I think. Um, because I know like Blizzard has like that added slow effect you can give. I don't know what they would add to Reign of Fire, but um, it is it is kind of underwhelming. I see Durgan has the... F I saw a Blast Wave. You have the full complement there. <laughs> Burn it all. Jeez. <laughs> so angry. Oh, jeez, of course, I don't have my... Uh, I'm just going to be right back. Everyone behave yourselves, Okay.
Okay. Is my mic on? Yeah, my mic's on. We, we back. We back. Yeah, Marag isn't um isn't joining us today in game. She is currently playing uh, Space Haven. They came out with a bunch of updates. Um, it's a bit like a Rim World, but in space. Uh, it's a bit more complex than that, but that's a good place to jump off on when thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Murag saying it. The the creators liked RimWorld, so they wanted to make something reminiscent. Well, hopefully, you guys weren't killing each other. <laughs> I came back and see a bunch of say chat, people getting violent. Um, I haven't, uh, I'm gonna probably wait to hear after this weekend too. I know that the team said that they would fix the issues with the buffs falling off. I just saw a bunch of hots go on me. It made me think about it. <laughs> Red handed. Uh, so that, that might be nice because, uh, I put it in the video. Poor Windrus lost multiple flasks last weekend to the buff problem. So, oh, so Alessandro, what was happening was that there is a, essentially, um, there was a separate problem that if you had a lot of buffs on, uh, if you have more than the cap, which I think is like 32 or something, what happens is, um, before, the client would just make less consequential ones just go away or and by go away i mean like it would just make them invisible they would still be affecting you but you couldn't see them and there was like priority and stuff like that on it um somewhere along the line um someone who had a lot of buffs maybe enough to even make them some of them invisible would get on like mounts and when you mount that's a buff but if uh you buff and your mount buff goes invisible because of the way they coded it before, it would cause the client to like, n like have big issues because you should be able to right click it or just click your mount again. The client did not like that. So they put a fix in. However, the fix had the unintended side effect of reverting like buffs becoming invisible and priority. It just put it back to like base V mangoes. And what that meant is the priority of your buffs was the oldest one gets pushed off first. So flasks and Zanzas were getting pushed off raiders who had enough buffs to actually get to the cap. So it wasn't affecting everyone, but if you had enough buffs to get close to that number, mainly like things like tanks who were getting like maybe a lot of hots on them, a lot of like random buffs from heals like it put on them from healers like that was pushing their flask off so they fixed it i just haven't been able to confirm it but i know the weekend is when most people do their raids so i'll be curious to know if the fix actually worked is even if i asked everyone here to put every conceivable buff on me i think and i put all my buffs on i think we would have trouble getting all the way up to 32. dragonova you didn't miss much I was catching up the, the fine people here on the uh, the buff debacle from uh, last week. We uh, talked a little bit about uh, the, how the market was doing. Everyone say hi to Dragonovi, the itemization team lead. Um, makers of... Hold on, let me see if I can find some stupid item. <laughs> I, can't, I don't have any to hand. But... Uh, Self-proclaimed rogue axe hater, I'll say. But Dragonovi, in your defense, I did I did show the people some of the issues with rogues having axes. <laughs> um Yeah, we, we did go over the uh the, the markets a little bit. Um 
I don't know if I had any, I don't think I've had any other team members in chat, but I, I will show it off pretty quickly if you're curious. Um, here is a quick look at, uh, here's the herbalism index. So that's every herb that's sold on the market, except for like sub level 30 herbs. That's them all amalgamated together. You can see right here. Here's where the change happened with the lashers. Um, Grom's blood, uh, fade leaf gone down quite a bit. Um, I know I had black Lotus went down too, which is odd. I thought I had, huh? I thought I had plague bloom in that list too. I should probably show off plague bloom, right? Um, yeah, let me just grab that quick. Cause I know I have it. Um, Mountain Silver, yeah, Mountain Silver Ice Cap. We'll throw those in there too. Oh, wait a minute, it's already in there. Oh, may oh, cause it's in a different folder, isn't it? One day I'll figure out. Oh, it's, it's in the trivia folder. Bear with me, bear with me. Yeah, play bloom should be in that list. Okay, why is it, why wasn't it showing up? Is play bloom not here? <laughs> play bloom should be in here, but it's just not. Let's see if I can fix that. Uh, get rid of that. Add this. Add directory. Oh, that's right. It always it always struggles with like having more than like five images. Um, I know another way to do this. We'll get rid of that. Okay, and I will change what you look at. There we go. Easy fix, everyone. Easy fix. So, uh, yeah. I had ones that don't even really matter that much. Here's uh, Shadow Power. Didn't get changed that much. Um, here's an, a very important one. Greater Frost Protection Potions. This is a reflection of Ice Cap coming down a bunch. Um, you can see even the the, no, the flasks, remember, they're part Black Lotus, but part a lot of other materials. So, Flask of Supreme Power dropped quite a bit. Uh, Distilled Wisdom, likewise. Titans, big drop. You can see it all started right around the 19th. <laughs> um, this is Lip. Lips are still needed, uh, but also going down. I right, showed a lot of these... Uh, there's there's the ice cap. So ice cap had a precipitous fall. Mountain silver sage, likewise. Um, still not under a gold, but um, and there's plague bloom as well. Big drop, big drop, big big wins. I think I told Dragon Ov over in uh, one of the other Turtle Out chats that I'd be talking about some of the market numbers. Oh, good point. Uh, I had someone in chat ask me a question that you might be able to answer, um, Dragonovi. Um, there are... There's sort of a convention with items that if an item has a use, even if it's, like, very common, it has a white name. And if it is, like, a crappy quality item doesn't have, a, like, a use beyond what it just says it is, it has a gray name. Um, one of, one of my fine fish folk here fished up the, um, 40 pound grouper. That's, uh, this, this item right here. Um, this has a white name, but has no actual use. There is no reagent it's used for. It is not anything other than something you can show off. Um, is there a missing recipe for this? Or is it just white so you can show off to your friends that you have a 40-pound grouper? 
or should it also have an offhand model on it? Well, yeah, that, that was my thought too. I thought it should be an offhand. Um, but something to look into. Or, or make a bug report. Exactly, yeah, Durgan, exactly. M most of the trophy fish are offhands. I can't think of one that isn't actually, except for this 40 pound grouper. But I thought maybe like it was part of like a quest or something, like you had to just find one. This, there's lots of quests I don't know anything about on this. There's so many that are added and there's just a lot in vanilla I don't know about, so. James says caster axe when? <laughs> My brother. <laughs> when indeed. Um, have you caught the green quality offhands in Iron Forge and Ogremar? I don't think I have. I know they're out there. Alessandro is saying Flask of the Titans is 20 gold cheaper. Now, I know it's great. Um, I'm thinking, um, I'm thinking we'll. We'll pack up a little bit, maybe take a walk about. There are some nice ruins over here we could check out. Um, we could maybe go go to Dire Mall and go do some um, people watching and watch how many people are doing Lasher farming. We'll, uh, I think when we do that, we'll all group up and go smash some stuff. I'll do one more Aquadynamic Fish Attractor and then we'll we'll get on the road for our little adventure for the day. <laughs> the arena's the arena's dangerous. Not just because there's mobs, but because people forget it's an open open PVP area. Durgan says my buddy Kuthelarus basically rents an apartment in Eldrathas these days. Yeah, I mean, it's a great place to make some herbs. I have heard some people, I mean, it's hard, right? Because it's just like reading tea leaves. You don't know what the developers are really planning. But I know I've seen some people say like, you know, don't get too used to it. So they might nerf it later. But I think if they're going to nerf it, they need to make sure that the dynamic spawns on the herbs in the rest of the world work. Um, is it's like we're very much like in a market correction time um, the supply has to catch up with demand and um, I think in general like uh, if I was some sort of like economic czar for the server I think I would wait for prices to start stabilizing like they're not going to perfectly stabilize right they're, they never are but I would wait for the dramatic shifts in prices to mellow out a little bit before I kind of got my bearings so I could kind of see where the supply side is at. Like, um, hey, you know, like it's, you know, the price is really low now. There's too much supply. Um, and uh, try to work from there, but we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, so the, the raw gold reduction is, it is virtually, I, I wouldn't say it's virtually nothing. I would say it, <clears throat> any time you can reduce how much a gold farm generates gold, it would help inflation. Um, maybe they weren't as aggressive, but you have to remember too, is that part of the reason why it's so valuable is because the herbs are also there. And when you weigh the herbs with the gold, um, it's it just makes a bunch of gold, right? But that's because you can sell the herbs. The herbs will eventually become less valuable. And um, based on the maths that I've done from some Lasher farming myself, it's a good gold farm, but it is not like by far the best gold farm anymore. Um, and I think that is probably where they want to shoot for anyway. Yeah, exactly, Durgan. You, you understand. 
Vendor gold versus gold already in circulation. Exactly. And I mean, there are some good gold sinks out there. Mounts, um, the Goblin, Brainwashing Device, um, even the items out of Serendipity's cl uh, clothing shop is also a very good gold sink. Um, but there aren't as many for people to sink all their gold into. So people still have a lot of gold, but they have less places to spend it on now, which will also double in an effect of making gold worth less. Um, but it's not going to be in a way that inflation makes it worth less. It's just that there's less to spend gold on. It still has its, its uh, value, but hopefully there's going to be more value added. So we'll see what happens. It's an exciting time. Exactly, Alessandro. Alessandro said it's no it's no longer 300 gold per hour. Which again, you would part of that 300 gold per hour is part of that math is that you're sell you're you're selling the herbs on the open market. I have um No, oh, actually maybe not all of you saw that. I did this for the news flash, but might be some value in showing it off now. I don't think all of you caught it. Um, let me see if I can grab this. Uh, gonna go to my old market watch spreadsheet. And I have something fun to show you guys. Well, fun, fun in like brackets, but fu fun. See. Nope, not that one. We want to change you over to this. Okay. Um, this data I gathered, like, I want to say back in August or September. I It's like a project I never finished, but this is a Lasher run. Um, let me see if I can zoom in. I can't really zoom in. I can make it bigger. So... What you see here is, I'll just use a cursor. So these, this is a, uh, this column is each run, right? Um, these gray items were the, like really the items in question. And here's their vendor value. So a serrated petal used to be worth um, 61 silver. Lasher root used to be worth 17 silver. Thorny vine was 30 silver. And you can see on each one of the runs how much of each one I would get. So on a run, I average everything out. Just from grays, I would be getting six gold. Now, the reason that's important is because look at the other average. This is just vendor value. You see how like the number's a lot lower? Um, and here it changes because I was using an old auction house average. If I was just to put in the vendor value of this, all this stuff would be super low. All this would be super low. This was old auction house averages. So again, vendor value over here, star ruby is worth a silver, right? Um, so the fact that these numbers existed, that I'd be getting between six and seven gold from one lasher run, means that after doing five of them, you're getting like 35-ish gold. And that's just gold. Um, so they nerfed that value. Because that's where a lot of the gold generation starts. Is everything else, you don't either would vendor it and it gives you peanuts, right? Or you put it in the auction house and it's worth what it's worth. You know. And then... See, this, this price got all inflated because this is old auction house. I'd have to look back to when I did this. But anyway, there is a lot of data on this. Oh, hello, Goblin Promanu. Uh, yeah, this is about all about Turtle Wow. Um, I think I can do links, right? Yeah, Turtle... Wow, what not not under wow dot org or does that 
turtle. Wow. Dot. All right, that 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 should work. That that one should work. I don't have the HTTP, but you can use those. Those will bring you to where you wanna take a look at everything. All right. Uh, to the people that remain, um, get on. Get on some, you know, adventuring gear. We're going. We're going for a little adventure. Thalaria, you're welcome to continue fishing because I know that's your fishing boat and they only last so long. <laughs> um, we'll go take a little walk about. Uh, I'd like to check out the ruins of Ravenwind and then maybe uh, wander over to Dire Mall, check what's going on over there. Do some do some people watching. I'll, uh, Thalaria, get you in. Get you in too. Flameon, I don't know if you want to join us, but you're welcome to. Gurky, you're not a party member. Red Handed, if you want to join, you can too. I'll uh, make this into a raid. If anyone else wants to join the walkabout, just let me know. I'll whisper. Just whisper me, I'll get you in. But uh, I think once upon a time, I used the runes of Ravenwind for um, one of my news videos. It's a pretty spot. I see a lot of people in my guild chat getting ready for to do all sorts of fun stuff today. Um, People looking to make flasks. Easy. A lot easier now. It was always easy to make a flask. Getting the materials was the hard part. <laughs> I think I have like uh, half a stack of flasks ready for a bomb swan when I can finally raid. I might just waste them on BWL or AQ40 now. <laughs> um, also, last night uh, was fun. You got 67 raw white scale. That's really good. I should have been more focused. I only caught 40. But I got 12 night fin. Night fins are also worth money. And from the previous fishing, I also got stone scale, some fire fin, and some winter squid. I feel you, Durgan. Sometimes sometimes it'd be like that. The IRL grind. Thanks. I'll, I'll, I'll gratefully take this absolutely useless fish. And I'll put it in the face of all the, uh, <laughs> the developers. Be like, what is this? <laughs> hey, red-handed. Did I not get you in? Oh, maybe... Oh, you're already in a group. We have our... We have our papers. <laughs> red-handed saying we don't have... It's illegal. Oh, boy. Everyone, be cool. <laughs> Everyone, be cool. We'll uh, kind of stay up on the ridge here. <laughs> Red-handed says my papers were fake. Oh no, Durkin, you don't have to go to prison. You can just blink out of it. Of course, it rains today. Fun fact out where I'm at, uh, it, uh, wait, what is this? Headmaster's, oh, that's right. You have the, uh, you have the int increasing, uh, staff. That's awesome. <laughs> Your jailer has mana burn. Oh, I'm sorry. That's rough. I think in the game, there's nothing Murag hates more than a mob with mana burn. Which is ironic, because... Priests, priests have mana burn, right? <laughs> Does anyone know if there's any lore about the runes of Ravenwind? 
Uh, yeah, no, Alessandro. I definitely know to hate it. It just... I feel like Murag's hatred of it is, like, really, really unique in that it's very strong. I mean, uh, also, v Vogi, I don't... I mean, yes. I know part of what Class Council would like to achieve is to fix some of imbalances in PvP. But I don't think they're ever going to balance PvP because you can't ever balance it. It's an unsolvable equation. Red Handed is telling me that uh, Ravenwind used to be some sort of party spot for the... Uh, uh, the Highborn? Not the High Elves, but the Highborn. I believe it. Alright. Well, there must be some kind of a quest that happens here, no? I mean, look at this. There's like a fire here. A North Spring Harpy. Okay, I've I've uh, I've never done any quests here. This is cool. I Murag's saying she's done some kind of a quest here. Let's uh, I'm gonna put my weapons on. We'll get we'll get a little picture here. Oh, put my bow away. Uh, I'll get uh, yeah. <laughs> ritual time. Um, Flamion, if you want to turn a little bit to the right for the picture. Your horse is like all up in my grill. Thank you. Now I know how much ping you have. <laughs> I like these little pictures we take. Sometimes I use them for thumbnails too. Oh, maybe, uh, you know, it might look good if I do, do a kneel. Yeah, 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 that looks, that looks good. Beautiful stuff. Right handed says you gotta charge the staff and the. Oh, okay, so there's fires you have to tap. Okay, that's cool. All right. Well, there's not a lot to look around here. We'll take a walk through the little, um, the ruins. Maybe beat up some harpies. Then we can get on our way over to Dire Mall to see where all the action's at. No, got a pickpocket, of course. Easy. Yeah, I mean, I wish I had more to say about PvP, it's not that I don't, it's that I just, I don't feel comfortable talking about it because I just haven't done it enough. <laughs> Alessandro, you're not wrong. I've seen those getting sold. Or, um, there's like PvPers who are like low level that have knacks and chants on their shoulders. Um, you can kind of trade the Naxx Enchants, because you can apply them through trade windows. Oh, nice. Bunch of junk. Well, that's nice. There's still, like, a bridge that remains here. I wonder if this bridge... Slayers of Exit? Oh my goodness, that's terrifying if you're a hardcore. I wonder if there used to be a, a river that uh, went down this way. I see. I see the discussion about PvP is happening regardless of my knowledge about PvP. Fair enough. I wouldn't have much to add other than it is... I hear people complain about it all the time, and I'm like, okay. Yeah, 
No, oh, I never got to pickpocket that one. Interesting, there's like one purple tree in this whole area. I wonder what that's all about. Okay, we're gonna get some free money. Delaria, what crossbow are you using? Inspect what you got here. Oh, uh, oh, Adra tool. When'd you get that? That's nice. That's hard to find. I'll see if we can rejoin the path somehow. I see red handed's out there. Red handed, I know you just pickpocketed it so I can't get money. I know what you did. You're not clever. <laughs> I'm on to you. Um, but no, uh, Gratz Delaria, that's that's a that's a huge, huge upgrade for hunters, I know. <laughs> no red handed, I'm not gonna give you the satisfaction of going to pit pocket something that doesn't have any loot on it. <laughs> I respect it though. Now, there's a there's a lot in Frawless. I still don't. Oh, I didn't actually look up. Was there actually a Solithid mob here? I still don't know. Someone was pretty sure there was. Dur if Durgan says yes, I believe Durgan. He's he clearly has the highest int out of all of us. Where would the hive is it is it in the high wilderness? Because I thought this was all like knolls. The writhing deep. I guess I would make it Oh yeah, I I never really did anything here. I think like when horde do stuff, there's not a lot of quests here. Yeah, terrible. I mean, again, I don't have a lot to say about PvP community because I don't participate in it much. I just don't think it's ever really been a focus for them. And you have to remember, too, that, like, the way developers work is they don't really work in, like, a span of, like, a month. They have much longer, larger plans. And for years, they were just an RP PvE community. And so, like, PvP was never really one of their focuses. So saying they ignored it is both accurate, but I think it's mostly devoid of the malice you might think is there. Um, but yeah. Rockbiter from Rockbiter Weapon. Yeah. Sh yes. I love Rockbiter. I mean, Rockbiter can be self-enchanted, but I don't think there's a... Yeah, there isn't a totem that does it, which is kind of weird because there's two weapon imbue totems. It's, um... There's Wind Fury and then there's a uh, Flame Tongue, but I don't think there's one for Frost, and I don't think there's one that does Rockbiter, so... Yeah, I mean, I've I've talked about this phenomenon before with other people, and I know I've talked about it on stream, but um, as someone who, like, is curious about PvP, a lot of the community they're in is just really not that fun to play with. And I, and I don't, I'm not trying to say that, like, there aren't people that are fun to PvP with. I think there are. I just think, like, the larger culture is just so, like, cruddy. It just isn't fun. And like I don't I don't know how to fix that. I, I know I can't do that by just being there. <laughs> like I could try to be an example. Um 
kind of like what I do for a lot of my PvE content and RP, but, um, I just, historically, there's been so much of that kind of culture, and I can even understand people enjoying that kind of a culture to a certain point, but I think what's difficult is that if you are a new player or you're trying to learn something that every community needs, you need to be welcoming to newer players so that they can learn and understand. Uh, when you're so mean towards people that aren't good, like how, how do you expect them to get good? <laughs> how do you expect them to like meaningfully like participate? And you know, there's always the, and I know this problem is that a lot of PVP has an issue because there's um, so many people that just want to go there to get PVE loot. So they they really don't want to participate. And so then there's like, they have no reason to meaningfully help the community and oftentimes actively make it worse. So it, it seems pretty, like a pretty big difficulty. <laughs> Alessandro, I have bumped into that myself. M Murag has as well. <laughs> Make Alliance PvPers play objectives. It's kind of difficult. That's been my experience. Again, not super experienced. Durgan says we're going to catch his buddy online outside of Dire Mall. Um, yeah, Alessandro, I, I, um... Like, I, I don't want to speak for Riddle, but I know Riddle has had a lot of difficulty, at least their guild has had a lot of difficulty with, um, like, when they schedule raids. Um, there's been groups that have just been, like, actively camping areas where they need to go to, to get to the raid portal. Which, again, I, I feel like is part of the culture of PvP is that like if there's a choke point and you want to fight that's a good spot but um, it's not simply them kind of harassing them and then moving on it's like uh, persistent corpse camping blocking putting models that are too big for them to like if it's like the orb for BWL put like a big model on top of it so they can't click it like that kind of stuff and then uh, I think they've even gone the extra mile and uh, made like videos of them just further trashing on those groups that they that, like. W when you think about that, I'm like, w where's where's the fun? <laughs> what? <laughs> when there's groups of people that will just go out of their way to make sure people are miserable, it's like y'all uh... y'all need to change your culture, and I don't think anyone can do it except for you. <laughs> So you have to understand, like, when I hear PvPers complain, I'm just like, ah, okay. Well, yeah, terrible, exactly. Like, the thing is, is that there's no bar for entry for going into a battleground. You show up into a battleground, and like you will either get yelled at by your team for being bad or the other team for being good. <laughs> it's like, hmm? the the PVP I enjoy usually is just like some friendly duels. Like that's fun, and keep it lighthearted. Talk about how one ability is better than the other, and talk about matchups. That's that's fun. Um. Uh, well, have fun raiding, Alessandro. Good luck. Hope you uh, hope your team does well. Good luck in getting Might of Menethil. If you get it, you'll have to show up to one of the fishing chats and show it off. Um, th thank you, Santor, for <laughs> for understanding what I'm saying. Um, but yeah, like like James, like I I don't I don't even think you're wrong. To, to like try to tell classes that like hey you you have a much bigger toolkit than lightning bolt or wrath 
use some of it, right? But how can you do that in the current culture? Because e even if even if you are like trying to be nice, there's so much other negativity that it's very easy for like a newer player to take that as like you talking smack about them or being mean to them, you know? <laughs> Terrible, that is very optimistic. You show up in a battleground and if you're bad, then you get told to take a step back and get good. But I mean like, what? <laughs> I mean, that's, that's fine, but, uh, because I mean, that phenomenon happens in PVE too as well, right? Like, if you're not doing what you're supposed to do in raid, you usually have a raid leader be like, hey, um, I really need you to do this thing. You're not doing the thing I need you to do. Your role is this. And then you hope that they course correct, right? But... I mean, I, terrible. I, I'm almost willing to like run an experiment with a lesser known one of my level 60 tunes, purposely play really bad, and then and then post my results. And and yeah, and it is unfair too. Dur Durgan has a good point that it's easy to see someone teaching in text as condescending. Like that's just a failure of the format as a whole right but what can you do um, part of the difficulty too is that like when you're in a raid encounter right usually you're in like a discord and even if you're not talking you can hear the leader right so like maybe something that would help the culture a little bit would be like um normalize having voice comms and now i also know that there's a big thing there with like strategy and that would also change a lot of stuff if you can just yell out commands. Um, but that's, again, another ball of wax. But I think that might help people to be like, um, let's say you were new to PvP and you're on a mage, right? And you show up as a fire spec. You don't even have Palm Pyro and you show up and you're doing your thing, right? It would probably be a better transition for someone to be in voice, to be like, you know, hey, Vrogreg's mage, um... I see you standing there for two and a half seconds casting fireball. You should probably be using something that like cast quickly or start by polymorphing the enemy and then doing a long cast because when you're standing there casting, you're kind of open and can get killed. Like I bet you that would be a lot easier to convey in voice than whispering and being like, don't use fireball, it's bad use something instant and in text like that that even that would look different you know and and terrible you do bring up a good point and i touched on this before too is that there are people that are doing pvp not because they want to but because they feel like they have to um and i i come back to this point all the time i always tell people to play a game if it's fun do you know how many people that are in there to rank, to get this item, to get the reputation they need, whatever it is. And when you have people doing something that they don't want to be doing, they have no investment. They just want to be there to get their thing done. And if they're miserable, they might want to make other people miserable too. So I think that's that also is a failing, I think, of the PvP structure. And that's something that I think the team can take a larger hand in dealing with. Because if you make the structure of PV such that there's less enticement for people to be there for no reason, I think that's good. Um, and that, that certainly could help the culture. Uh, remember too, like uh, when I was progressing with Vrograg, there are definitely things in Alterac Valley that I should have gotten. That would be good for me if i was being completely sweaty about it right there's like exalted rewards there's even a frost resist trinket you know like there are things that you want to get even not even i'm not even talking about ranking up just that stuff 
Um, and part of the reason I never did it is because I'm like, I don't like PvP. I didn't want to do it because I don't like PvP. And why would I go do something that isn't going to be fun? You know, because then I would just be miserable. I'm glad there's a healthy discussion happening. Remain respectful, everyone. <laughs> I see the terrible and saunter going back and forth. Um, also, PvP as a rogue does does feel very different. It's it, I would almost say it's like you're playing a different game. But I... I also think that's part of the strength of Rogue is that you have such a unique toolkit in PvP. It's really fun from what I have done. Oh, yeah, that's true. Uh, Durgan mentions uh, Lore Keeper friend uh, Rafiki tells me AV has a ton of... It does have a ton of quests. Do you think they will add Transmog Gold Sinks? Um, there kind of already is in a way. Uh, you can buy some items off the auction house that will get transmuted into fashion coins, but that isn't exactly a gold sink. I think you mean something that like you use raw gold to buy just the item. I think it's not a bad idea. Um, probably needs some looking into and tight price control. I don't know. I'm sorry. The you can just, with gold, buy fashion coins. No, but okay, that's what I'm talking about because they were asking about gold sinks. Right, but the, like the outfits are gold sinks. Yes, the the outfits are gold sinks. I um, but they were asking about transmogs. But I, I guess that's similar because you would use those outfits. But red-handed, damn, damn, look at that. Looking lovely, red-handed. <laughs> I, I, uh, James, I am aware of the meme of fighting on roads in Battlegrounds. Sometimes I like doing it just because I know it'll annoy people who <laughs> really care about PvP. <laughs> it is a bad idea. It doesn't help you with any objectives. I'm, we're talking about Arathi Basin mostly, but um, to a certain extent also Alterac Valley and fighting in the middle of um, Orson Gulch. Uh, yeah, and Murak, you did drop a lot of gold on Wintervale costume outfits. Durgan is telling me of his Timog hopes and dreams. The Skullamance Necromancers wear a shoulder pad with the same skin as mine, but the same model shape of black of black mage weave. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, we can we can cut across here, it's fine. We'll we'll pick up the road into Dire Mall here. Um, I remember some of the best experiences I had in PvP was early on in Classic when I was just seeing what was what it was all about. I remember I did a Alterac Valley. I wonder if she'll even remember this, but um, uh, I was I think Murug might have been trying to get her Warlock gloves or something, but didn't Alterac Valley. I was on my mage. And I just remember we had a raid leader who just said, like, like, keep attacking. They bad. They so bad. They like just kept like 
kept shit talking the alliance <laughs> again and again but only in our raid chat like obviously there was like no way to talk to each other that well but um it, it was i just remember like just laughing at that uh how they just openly made fun of the alliance so much and i remember that being kind of a positive experience um and this was also i think before the classic av meta had really been determined well or maybe it had but i just was unaware um i remember having a lot of fun on a mage um at least in alterac valley where i understand my sole job back then was to act as a ballistic missile where i just run into a group of people and explode a bunch and then die now that is not the most nuanced understanding of pvp but that was fun yeah yeah so yeah Murag was grinding for, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, was grinding for exalted for her offhand now murag has been on record too saying she doesn't like pvp that much but like that's another example of someone who feels like they need to do PvP for gear. It's kind of funny too because I've had uh, the two classes that I have like the most gear on, I've played the most, Rogue and Shaman, are like really tops in, in PvP situations. And like, I remember I had someone uh, in Ogremar, see Obamsman walk around in their gear and they're like, wow, you must melt faces in battlegrounds. I'm like, I've never been to one. And they gave me that blank stare. They're like, what? N then why do that? I'm like, oh, I just, I just like shooting things with lightning bolts, dude. <laughs> Fun fact too, uh, this, um, as we're walking in, the like promenade here extends quite a bit. I don't know if anyone's ever uh, been there. I've done it before when I was trying to get eyes for the 0.5 quest. The f the fluoride stare. Wait, sorry, Eldrith Row. <laughs> it's true. I can't tell you how many times I've done this particular run with someone who is going to go do lasher farming. It's nice to come here as an explorer, do a little RP walk. It is impressive how big they made this area, you know? Oh, and my model disappeared. There it is. Indeed. The Highborn did did say go big or go home. Oh, I thought I had it turned off. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry about sorry about that for anyone who didn't want to hear Vape Nation. I normally mute my mic when I hit my vape. Yeah, you know, red-handed, you bring up a good point. Like, why make it so big? <laughs> like, I guess it would be to show off that they have the magic capable of doing it, but... I mean, were the Highborn getting invaded a lot, or... Or was it just, just totally to show off? I don't know. So, sorry, red-handed. <laughs> if, if me hitting my vape made you want to smoke. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think I think terrible has has a has a good like a good approach that if you are earnestly wanting to get better at PvP, and you know you approach it with you know. An attitude of like you want to be there i i think it's i i think asking more experienced players what to do is helpful and just as it is with anything else in the game you know hey i don't know about this how do i do this thing generally especially on turtle well the community is pretty friendly hello merv 
<laughs> yeah, Terrible says it's no different than reading a boss guide. I would disagree. PvP is way more complex. PvE is simple. It is easy. There is not that many things that deviate from a single path, right? And I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that's one of the strengths of PvP is that there's so much complexity to it. Like, as a rogue, um, there are some matchups that, like, if I'm in a battleground and I see that, like, hey, there's this... Like, I'm not even going to bother taking on a hunter unless I have the drop and I'm pretty sure there's someone else nearby that could help because the matchup's really tough for me. But, like, if I see a hunter in the open world, I... Pfft, I'm vanishing, I'm hiding, I'm hoping that the dog doesn't find me, <laughs> you know, that whole thing. But there's other classes, like, you know, if it's a warrior, I might want to be, okay, is my evasion off cooldown? Do I have flourish available to me? Um, is that warrior smart enough to know that battle stance will give them overpower so that when I dodge, they can overpower me? You know, there's a lot of things that goes into it. Whereas, like, a raid encounter, it's like, rag, rag not move. Rag take damage when you hit him. Be near him with mana bad. Like, very, very simple. But yeah, I, I think, uh, I think in a certain respect, you do owe it in a way, if you are earnestly trying to do PvP, I think you owe it to the people you play PvP with to at least a attempt, like try. Um, that's why nothing gets them more upset than showing up and doing nothing. AFKers will drive PvPers insane. They hate it. They hate it more than the other faction. <laughs> nope, there's the, there's the arena. There's nothing in the arena right now. I was hoping we might see a boss. Let's, uh... Red-handed, careful, careful. I don't want you to fall. Oh, can you walk all the way around? That's cool. All right, do, do you think it could... All right, let's let's try this. We're walking speed. This shouldn't be too different. Let's walk on the let's walk on the rim here. Careful. Also, I love the uh, sprite darter hatchling, Durgar. Very thematic with the area. There's a lot of sprite darters here. So I want to go. I want to go wave and say hello to all the Lasher farmers. There's a good chance you can find an orange table too. I think, oh, wait, is that, uh, who has the red-handed? Is that your dream frog? I know you're around here somewhere. Dream frog, I, I want to get a dream frog. Take, take a look at all the names. You'll see mostly mages, uh, paladins, and, uh, priests doing this. Maticus, I know Maticus, wave hi to him. Well, yeah, uh, this is where all the action's been going on. And most people will uh, finish up doing the lashers and they'll camp and they'll show up over there at Dire Mall West because that's where the camp location is. We got, uh, let's see, we have... S oh, that's not you? Oh, I don't know who has the dream frog red-handed, but I love the dream frog. It's cute. Um, if we do a little who, um, I think if we do, do di I think you can't separate by section. So dire mall. Um, it's only displaying 50. Um, this, I don't even know if I'm necessarily doing the, the who correctly, but uh, see plenty, plenty of players here. 
Primarily looks like paladins. Yep, there are a couple other. Ugramal? That's actually... A really, sorry, that's a really good name. So that's only in dungeon. Okay. Well, because here's the thing. If I look at this zone, right, it says... um. I think it currently, well, actually, I'm not in a dungeon right now, Red Handed, but it showed my name, and I'm not in a dungeon. So that shows anyone who's, like, in this courtyard area or one of the dungeons, I think. Take a, take a little walk around. Let's do a little circuit before we finish out here. I still don't know whose Dream Frog that was. The, uh, the elites here, uh, they're, they're fun. Uh, if you're like uh, level 60, it's a good way to test if you can take on elites because they're like low 50. I know I've been, I can definitely solo these guys. Look at him try to move. Oh, he's evading. That's problematic. Okay, you guys walk around him. If he activates again, I'll take care of him. Yeah, there it is, there it is. Escape, you fools! <laughs> ah, I can't believe he cheated right in our face. Let's see. Uh, thanks to being a rogue with Repost, I can usually keep him disarmed most of the time. So he doesn't hurt when he hits me. Easy. But uh, not too hard for mages to take them on either. They're pretty. You can crowd control them, uh, frost nova them. You really don't want them to get in your melee range. We have a uh, stabby over here. Oh, it was Stabby's frog. Okay. <laughs> Durgan, I I don't I don't know how to respond to that. <laughs> Durgan saying I bet you roasted orc smells good. <laughs> Work smells like boiled sprouts. Uh, maybe. Look at him try. Look at him try. Oh, uh oh. Fret problem. I'm not. I'm still walking. Okay, we're good. Careful now. <laughs> it's not advisable to, to have RP walk on during combat. Oh, James, uh, I know the answer to that question. Uh, be an elemental shaman. <laughs> that, that is the answer. I mean, I think, I feel like Rograg is properly intimidating. I mean, if I saw that walking at me, I'd, I'd be scared. It's a, it's a shame that Rogue Tier 3 looks so pretty. I really like the look of it. Because it's so uninspired for a look. I'm like, oh, I have tier 3, I just look cool. A lot like rogue tier. I mean, let's be honest. The rogue tiers are really good. Take a look up here. Yes, help Stabby. Well, let me ask. Hey, Stabby. You working on your ogre eyes? For zero point five quest. I like your frog. <laughs> Oh, okay. 
Fair, fair enough, fair enough, Red. That's, that's a good point. Their tongue was removed. Was their tongue removed? Did they have that model? <gasps> no. Oh. Well, good luck then. I, you know, I immediately want to take back it once I saw they're wearing tier, tier three heads and shoulders. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, that was a dumb question. Yeah, I don't think someone in tier three is going to be farming their point. F well, you could be doing the farm for your point five if you're a completionist. Yeah, and um, although I'm normally pretty partial to the stuff that Mirage says, I, I, I would agree that um, I, I don't I don't think PvP has to make you hardened to something. I think it should be much more a matter of experienced or not experienced. Um, having the thick or thin skin um, is, I think, still an active detriment to the community of, of PvP. Uh, I mean... That also could just be one of my more subjective opinions, but I think it ultimately means less people want to do it. And the people that do do it are not there for the best reasons. Are we taking kills from Stabby? Maybe we should stop doing that. <laughs> Stabby's nice. Oh, hello, Weech. Weech is very excited. Uh, Weech shared with me um, that, sorry, Dur Durgan, keep walking, I'll follow, we're just doing a circuit, uh, I want to show off, um, Weech has been working on an Omnicord emulator, and I don't know what that means, but Weech was kind enough, I'm back now, <laughs> uh, was kind enough to teach me that the, uh, Omnicord is some kind of a instrument that was made in Japan, that's like no longer really available anymore. But uh, we each good, good friend of the stream has hung out with me when I've been fishing by my lonesome sometimes. So shouts out. And this is the, uh, yeah, you know, I didn't really, I'm sorry. I, I don't think I've ever actually paid attention to this. There's statues here. Did they all have stat? Oh my God. There's been statues this whole time. It's like the kind of thing, you know, in the back of your head, but you never really look at. And they don't have any placards or anything for who these people are, right? red-handed be polite <laughs> I mean I, I will say that this costume choice is a little suspect well let's see if we can um let's try to line up like right about here we can get like a nice picture with them in the background well like try to line up alongside uh Frograg. let me put my uh weapons away and my bow. Red-handed, it's up to you if you want to unstealth for the picture. <laughs> Alright, let's get a good, uh... That'll, that'll make for a nice, uh... A nice picture for probably the very much Lasher-themed news we'll be having. Red-handed says they're meant to be super ancient, lost to history. Okay, good to know. But yeah, they have um, they have like a couple different models here, right? They is that okay? This one's the same as that one. That's like an elf dude. And there's another one with the bow, like that one. Interesting. They look like they're gold, but I, I mean, if they were gold, the ogres would have taken them down, right?
You think they're solid gold? Well, you are a dwarf. You would know. I'm sorry if that's racist. <laughs> I don't have treasure finding. That's a racial though. Hello, Weech. Weech is somewhere nearby. <laughs> um, the the thing about uh, I wanted to show off. We they did um. They do have like a little splinter civilization here. I think we've gone there before, Ron Athalas, right here. Um, but yeah, most most of them are gone. Ooh, that's a good thought. Durgan says the uh, this is the elf wing. I'd wager the ogres can't loot them because they chance remain. I don't know if it's the elf wing. It's definitely the plant wing. Or no, it is elf wing, right? Because uh, they have the what's his face with like the enchant. Uh, like they're using Immolthar, I think, for energy. I think that's the lore. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I just want to say Uriel, Se Uriel Septim. That's that's a great that's a great name. <laughs> I don't think they're going to bring back the AV back door. I'm glad because I never learned it. I know it was there. I just never learned it. All right. We've been streaming for a little bit. We'll probably wrap up here. Uh, thank you, everyone who came for the fish. We caught some good stuff. Uh, my count on what I caught today, I caught uh, 20 raw white scale. Remember, if you find these while you're fishing, they're worth good money. So don't, don't just vendor them because you don't know what they do. Got some night fin. Stone scale, firefin snappers, even some winter squid. It's a pretty good haul. Um, thank you to the people who hung out. Weech, oh, Weech is here. Hey, Weech, you're just in here for time to finish up. I'm sorry you can't be a, a whale on land anymore. Uh, but no, thanks everyone for coming by and chatting. Um, really looking forward to news this week. Uh, lots of fun market news to go over. Uh, make sure to uh, check before you buy anything if it's consumable based. I'll show off um, the cat cam, which is really just Bulbasaur one more time. Say goodbye to Bulbasaur. All right, we'll, uh, we'll wrap up there. Thank you everyone again for watching. <clears throat> Remember, this is a game. Try to have fun when you're playing games, guys. Remember to have fun. Uh, be kind to one another. And as always, the deadliest weapon is knowledge. <laughs>